The Westminster Mall is an enclosed two-level shopping mall in Westminster, California that opened in 1974. Thank you for your past comments. If you've clicked onto this video, then you know what today is. It's Monday, 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 Mall Madness. Every Monday I'll be releasing a new video on a defunct or maybe not so defunct mall and its history. Make sure you stick around at the very end of the videos. I'd like to see if you, the viewer, are paying attention. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for my latest mall video, defunct store, occasional throwback Thursday or soda history. Leave a suggestion about a future video or memories of this mall. Thanks. In the 1920s, the world's largest goldfish farm was relocated to the area where the mall stands today. Construction of the mall began in the 1970s. The Westminster Mall opened for business at approximately 9.30 in the morning on August 7, 1974. The three original anchors included May Company, Sears, and Buffums. 1975, J.W. Robinson's was added as the fourth anchor. If you went to the mall in the 1970s to the 80s, you might remember the Mall Cine Fourplex, which opened on August 7, 1974, and was located on the inside of the Westminster Mall. The UA Theater also had a twin on the outside. You may also remember Card America, a greeting card and gift shop that competed with Hallmark or maybe even Carl's Toys and Hobbies. So what are some of your memories of this mall? Leave a comment below. In the 1990s, the mall's three anchor stores actually changed their names. Buffums closed in May of 1991 due to the chain being liquidated. By January of 1993, Robinson's and May Company merged to form Robinson's May. As a result, the May Company store was rebranded Robinson's May, and the J.W. Robinson was closed as one of the 12 Robinson's and May Company stores, closing as part of the merger. The closed Buffum store became a Robinson's May home store in March of 1993, and in November of that same year, the closed Robinson store became a JCPenney, which had relocated from the Huntington Center Mall. In 1990, the original mall cinema was taken over by Edwards Cinema. In 2002, the Robinson's May home store building was closed and torn down for a new Macy's. When Federated Department Stores, now Macy's Inc., purchased Robinson May and other May Company names in September of 2006, Macy's moved into the Robinson's May building and the former Macy's location soon became a Target. 2008, the mall underwent a renovation, relocating the carousel and constructing a play area in its place. The grand reopening was on November 15, 2008. The Sears closed in April of 2018, making it the last original anchor store to close. As of January of 2021, the space is still vacant. Today, the 1.2 million square foot mall features anchor stores JCPenney's, Macy's and Target, with one vacant anchor spice left. Today, I decided to make a visit to Westminster Mall. It was actually my first visit to this mall, and from what I heard, it was a dead mall, so I decided to see for myself. So after poring over the mall directory, and yes, I do that from time to time, I noticed that there weren't a lot of stores at the mall. Someone commented that they googled it but couldn't find it. It is in fact still here. When I first pulled into the parking lot, I saw the old JCPenney, 
which looked a lot like the old Robinson's at the Puente Hills Mall. When I got there, I was treated to the sound of a car doing donuts in the parking lot. Kind of the same kind of welcome I got when I went to the Puente Hills Mall. Upon entering through the J.C. Penney side, I saw the unique building in the center of the mall. I had never seen anything like that before. The mall was pretty quiet given that it was on a Saturday afternoon. The mall reminded me of Puente Hills Mall in which this mall should have been really busy given that it was on a Saturday. The mall had a gym which was pretty empty as well. When talking to the merchants, I asked if this mall was closing. Most said they didn't know. Maybe they were just saying that, but why was everyone having a store-wide sale on all of their merchandise? When I go into the mall nowadays, I pay attention to the architecture. I thought this mall was pretty cool. The Bath and Body Works is still there, and they occupy the old Charlotte Roos building. It looks like the Target was closed, but I heard that they had closed the mall entrance to Target due to the fact that there was a smash and grab armed robbery at the jewelry store, and the suspects ran through the mall and through the Target to get away. In response, Target closed the mall entrance permanently. Many of the stores around Target were closed. Although the mall seemed pretty empty, there was quite a few stores that were still in this mall, including Kay's Jewelers, Arrow Postal, Victoria's Secret, Foot Locker, GameStop, and Hot Topic. As I was walking the upper level towards the Sears side, I noticed more and more empty shops. You can't miss the John's Incredible Pizza on the floor below. There was also a couple of restaurants that were gone from the food court. The Sears had closed in April of 2018 and has stood vacant since then. The former Sears entrance was covered by a mall sign. The shops below were empty as well. Another thing that I noticed was that the escalators were turned off. Only one was working. Cube sits next to the Bath and Body Works. The stores below them are vacant. As I was walking towards the Macy's side, you can see the Scorpion Jewelers, as well as more empty buildings. Some of the stores must have closed recently because the signs were still there. There are still some big attractions to this mall though. The mall has a carousel, much like South Coast Plaza, as well as the malls like Carousel Mall in San Bernardino and Puente Hills Mall in Industry. In fact, the carousel was completely empty and they were running the thing. Apparently they were trying to save electricity by not running the escalators nearby. The Lux Buffet, which takes up a good portion of the top part of the mall, was enormous, but upon checking, the only customers was a single party of 15 people. There was no one else there. Here are more empty stores. Here is a look at the former Robinson's May store on the outside and what it looks like now as Macy's today. YouTube channel Melissa640 mentioned she remembered the red carpet on the ramp on the Buffum side. I walked downstairs to check out the carousel. Again, it was empty.
Most of the bottom stores were closed on the Macy's side. And as you can see, very little people at this mall. There were more empty stores, including another Hollister's, that closed. I struck up a conversation with a customer who had worked at this mall and had been coming here since the 1980s. She proceeded to give me a history of this place, and this was her go-to mall. Other viewers to my previous video commented how this was their childhood mall. I talked to another merchant and they told me that the mall would be closing in 2025. I recently read an article published in April of 2023 that the Macy's and Westminster Mall could be transformed into a collection of residential townhomes and a 2.5 acre public park with an amphitheater for summer concerts. Among the other stores was a Foot Locker and a Small Wonders store. As I continued to walk, I saw the recently closed John's Incredible Pizza, which closed in 2023 due to the mall management to repurposing the space, only leaving Buena Park and the Carson locations. Meanwhile, the Sears wing of the mall could become a row of market rate apartments with manicured landscaping and swimming pools. The current Sears parking lot site could morph into a three star hotel with a pool, spa and an outdoor lounge. Potential plans by the Irvine based developer shop off realty investments have submitted to Westminster for its 26 acre portion of the 1.3 million square foot 100 acre Westminster Mall. The mall currently has four owners who all have their own ideas with their piece of land. The Bolsa Pacific at Westminster plans to develop a thriving mixed use community of multifamily homes with walkable community spaces, restaurants, retail, and a nearby hotel. Their plans also call for nearly 1,100 market rate contemporary style apartments, more than 100 for sale residential townhomes, a 175 room hotel, a two and a half acre park, a dog park, pickleball courts, and a 25,000 square foot of retail restaurants and a food hall. The redevelopment comes as malls have become declassé in the internet age, where customers can easily shop online and have items delivered straight to their homes. The plans will start sometime between early to mid-2025. As I walk through this mall, it is really sad to hear that the mall will be closing. Most of the retailers at this mall are having some sort of store-wide sale. The larger name brand merchants such as Zoomies and Victoria's Secret will continue at other locations and hopefully find jobs for the displaced employees. But it's the mom and pop stores who suffer greatly. This is their livelihood who will have to find another place or just go out of business. Oh yeah. The Orange Julius, as well as the longest surviving tenant, Spencer's, closed at this mall. Congratulations, you made it this far into the video. When I find you, pop quiz, hot shot, shot. So let's see how close you were paying attention to my video. So how many anchor stores closed in this mall? So if your answer is six, give yourself a hand. You were paying attention. Thanks for watching. So what do you remember about this mall? Leave a comment or some more details that I may have missed, or maybe even a suggestion for a future mall video you would like to see. Don't forget to hit that like button 
and please subscribe to Eric C Productions. Thanks for watching.